on tonight's very special episode of the Talking TV podcast. Myself and Chris have the extremely incredible pleasure of interviewing another cast member from Kim's Convenience, the one and only Rodrigo Fernandez Stahl, better known as Enrique from Kim's Convenience. He has made many an incredible guest appearance, and we're about to interview him. Chris, how do we keep getting so lucky? <sighs> Man, you know, it's just sometimes you put good energy out into the universe, and I guess this is what it is when it comes back to you. I'm uh, incredibly excited to chat with this man. He's hilarious. He completely steals every scene he's in. And guys, let's let's jump into it, man. Let's hit our in our interview with Rodrigo we're, Fernandez Stoll. We're about to hit the Grand Slam here, people. Stay tuned. <laughs> All right, we got the man here, Rodrigo Fernandez Stoll, a.k.a. Enrique from Kim's Convenience. What is going on, dude? Happy to have you here. Good. Who did that theme song? That would be this guy. That this guy sounded right here. awesome. That really <laughs> right? wicked. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, um, this is, I'm in my studio right now, so welcome to my studio, man. Thanks for hanging. We appreciate now, it. Now I, I picture you like... I'm picturing you five years ago just having the sickest long metal hair. <laughs> you would be would it, would it surprise you to know that he had no such thing? His hair was the exact length that it is now. The only oh, thing he had shit. was about a pencil thin mustache is what he had. That was the only difference. I swear. Listening to Dream Theater and like <laughs> Death and just having that was that was awesome. That that was very well produced. Thanks, man. Yeah, so I, I started off in my high school years in, like, a screamo band, and then when Dom met me, it was, like, early college, and uh, I was kind of in my, like, man, like, I'm so angry at the music I used to play, the band didn't work out, doing, like, a Bob Dylan folkier style thing, so hence the mustache and, like, the slicked haircut, and I've kind of just stayed comfortable with it since, but uh, that's about it, you know? Stay <laughs> comfortable. That's great. He rocks it most definitely. So, oh, Rodrigo, man. we wanted to start off tonight by just asking you, like, a few obviously basic questions, you know, getting things started and rolling overall. So I guess my first question is, like, who is Rodrigo? Like, where'd you come from? Uh, how'd you decide to get into acting? And just tell us kind of how the stages in that journey led to Kim's Convenience. Holy shit, there was, like, four questions in there. I know, um, right? I'm pretty good at layering questions <laughs> one after <laughs> uh, Well, I, I mean, I'm from... I, I live in Toronto. I'm from here. I, gr I grew up about 20 minutes outside of Toronto in Markham. Uh, and I went to high school at a, at a place called Brother Andre. And, um, I don't know, I was, I was like a, I kind of was like an all around student. Like I, I played sports and I did drama and everything. I wasn't very good at classes. I didn't really show up to class a good amount, but I did enjoy drama. And, um, yeah, I just kind of, uh, I, I found out that I was, you know, into into theater into acting and um ended up scoring a spot in the uh humber college comedy program uh which is uh, a college here in toronto by the lake uh and it's a, a comedy writing program for if you if you want to be a comedian so i ended up going there with a with a friend and uh took some classes and it ended up being really, really cool because I got to meet a bunch of people that wanted to do the same thing. And that's how it kind of started. And I just, uh, it, it, through that school, I was like, okay, how do I get an agent? How do I, you know, how do I uh, uh, write a bit? So what were some of your uh, your earlier influences, you know, like something that you saw on the how, screen? How sweaty do I look right now? <laughs> Trust me, it doesn't show. Oh. I, 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 I get Peloton, the, I, baby, I can Peloton. Get, I can get the self-conscious <laughs> angle of it, but trust me, it doesn't show one bit. Well, no, no, you look I great, have, man. I have a light right here under me, so I'm kind of like, woof. Um, sorry, what was your question? Oh, no, I, the, I was just wondering, what were some of like your earlier like influences, you know, films, TV shows that you saw maybe when you were younger that have kind of just always resonated with you? Um... I don't know the the huge like all the like Happy Gilmore, all the Adam Sandler films. Um, I watched a lot of like Mr. Show. 
Um, I watched a lot of... Man, I, I used to watch... I watched, like, Conan every night. Nice. That was kind of the... It was that... You know what the three shows I watched the most growing up were? Were uh, Jerry Springer. <laughs> um, I, I wasn't allowed to watch these shows. That was the thing. That's what made me want to watch that's them always even the more. My parents didn't allow me to watch them, but for some <laughs> reason... I snuck somehow I snuck a TV I had like a tiny portable TV like black and white TV that I that I smuggled into my room and I watched Jerry Springer uh Married with Children and uh Conan and those were the three things that I watched at night and uh luckily Married with Children didn't turn me into like a serial killer that's <laughs> um... like usually a good sign from yeah, I that know, show right? <laughs> um, no, that, I mean, that's yeah. It seems very comedy oriented. I mean, I guess Jerry Stiller is comedic in other ways. I mean, not really. Uh, sorry, not Jerry, Jerry Springer. Stiller Springer. Jerry, Springer. Jerry Stiller was the legend, of course. But uh, <laughs> Jerry Springer, I guess, is comedic in other ways. But what was it kind of about that, like, early, I guess, like talk show reality style thing that you kind of gravitated towards? I don't think I gravitated to it. I think it was just it, since it was the only channel I got that was the only thing I was exposed to at that time. Um, and like everything else was like, I don't know, classic, uh, action movies, you know, like, uh, uh, Stallone movies, Schwarzenegger movies, Van Damme movies. And in a way, those are kind of comedy. I mean, now we look at them and they're pretty hilarious. I don't, I, I've commando was an action, as a comedy. To me, Dude, those football, movies are so funny now. They're awesome. So yeah, when I, like, I grew up with two older brothers that kind of just shoved things in my face that they liked. And, uh, I mean, I didn't like everything, but I, I learned how to make fun of stuff that they liked. So I think that was kind of my thing where I just, I thought everything was really, I found the humor in, in a lot of that different stuff, but Looking back on it, watching those shows like Jerry Springer and everything, like those shows are pretty funny. The the format that they had, I mean how how serious he would take them, those guests. Right. Uh, very sad too. Uh, sad the whole sad situation with those people. I mean, he probably paid them a hundred bucks to to guest on those shows. Our, uh, our film school actually would organize trips out to the studio in New Haven, Connecticut, because we're not too far from there where they shoot those types of shows. You so I didn't go there? Yeah. Well, I went there once. I didn't see Jerry Springer, unfortunately. I saw The Maury Show, though, yeah, which is wow. also safe there. How old were you? Were you in the audience? Yeah, we were in the audience, man. And there was the guy hyping us up and having us clap and laugh. And then since we were at the film school there, we got to kind of go back and sort of see the inner workings. And uh, Wait, how old were you when you got to be in the audience for Maury Povich? Pr probably 21. Yeah. Right? Was, oh, that's cool. I, that's great. I, I was 18. That's a great age. It, so, yeah. It's definitely interesting as far as seeing how the backstage of those work. That's actually the perfect age to be in the audience for one of those shows <laughs> because... Yeah. I agree. Like your your moral moral compass just doesn't really matter at that point. Yeah. You're just kind of like I don't mind if I'm I'm not really supporting this. I'm just in the audience just spectating. Right. No, totally. And it was just description overall. It's so funny to see the guy hyping us up and sort of telling us like, "All right, this is what's going to this is the emotion that's going to come after this scene, so you guys got to make this noise." It was uh it was pretty telling to sort of see the inner workings of, you know, I guess professional television, but I, I mean, you're kind of no stranger to that at this point. So, I, I mean, I, I would love to sort of know everything that you'd be willing to tell us about sort of your journey with Kim's Convenience and and sort of showing up there in the first place. Um well, it, well, with Kim's Convenience, it was uh, it was like any other audition. Um, the thing with Kim's Convenience was it had a lot of hype behind it uh, because of this, the success that the play had. Um, and the play was huge here in Toronto. Um, and I think they went to New York for a little bit as well. Later on, maybe? I think they did, they did the show 10 years later in New York City. Um, yeah, on Broadway. Yeah, yeah, they did it there, uh, which got crazy reviews too there. Um, but uh, here in Toronto, yeah, the sh as soon as uh, everybody found out they were making a, a CBC show out of it, um, I think everybody wanted to audition for it. And uh, yeah, I ended up just going in with the audition 
like the script in my hand and I to tell you the truth when I read it uh, I was like this is like a combination of my parents and then I just did an imitation of both my parents in the room and it turned out to be pretty funny and uh, yeah and then it just I, I, I know that the character Enrique was only supposed to be in one scene in that one it were in the in that one episode that's how it usually goes to those types of characters yeah and then they ended up just kind of bringing me back which was really nice and uh yeah they're they're like the nicest people ever so yeah it's pretty interesting as far as that goes because like enrique besides being like in the pilot obviously is one of the first major characters that we're introduced to that like goes on to have a mainstay you know like the interesting thing about kim's is that it develops each kind of like of their subsequent like background characters that then come into yeah. the foreign become more main presences and Enrique, at least to the point where I'm that, is still kind of, like, been that occasional guest star, like, more of, like, a Frank than, say, like, a Mr. Chin or a Mr. Meta. But, like, he still has, like, some pretty notable, sizable, meaty parts, obviously. And it plays into just, you know, the tone and the story of that first episode and how it just, like, sets the tone for the rest of the show so perfectly. Yeah, I mean, he was kind of the Kramer for, for the, like, I don't know. I didn't really get into anything. Did I get into anything, like, too like with anything with like substance in there i mean i think when he found the lump on yeah. the back i think that was kind of the only yeah, time the where it was thing like I think of. things got real but uh for me enrique was just pretty goofy and it was really fun to play yeah. that character well your chemistry with mr <laughs> kim is just undeniable and and the way that even though your character isn't i guess one of like the the core five you you still like have so much development because of the way that you guys sort of bounce off each other and like you slowly kind of see like uh mr kim he likes to act all hard you know but really he's a softie and he loves all of his customers and you're kind of the customer in my opinion that really sort of like shows you that how much mr kim loves the store you know like he, he loves what he was able to give in my opinion to his kids through the store sort of building something from the ground up but he also loves the people that come in every day and like you're really the first taste of like the first few seasons he's a little angry and bitter but you break him down you know and you sort of like really open up that hard exterior and get to like this i destroy um him you can <laughs> say I destroy him. no um yeah it was such a cool it was such a cool routine to do you know like uh mr kim I th i'd say mr kim is just the best character ever um and it's so so fun to be able to like play off somebody like that and that says a lot about paul as an actor and he's just uh the the nicest guy ever and the most giving person performer to be around because you know that whatever you get as an offer or anything it's going to be so good um i'm not the best when it comes to remembering lines not the greatest I'm not I'm going to be honest but if you find somebody that can somehow help you when you're uh when you're starting out in in the day and shooting like someone like Paul it can go very very smoothly because sometimes if you don't remember your lines you get stuck and you know a, a lot of people don't like that the director has to come over and be like do you remember your lines the other actors are kind of like come on buddy like we you know lunch is coming up soon but not Paul. He was very, very nice. And he was very patient. Um, I would screw up a good amount. But also, like, you screw up because it's such a... I was doing a character that was so goofy. So you start to get giggly. You start to crack jokes. And I get into the, I get into the habit of trying to make people laugh um, when you're doing scenes. So that for me, that was kind of the, the best part was how how nice they were to let me do that because you don't really get to do that all the time yeah i guess that kind of in a way answers what is a question that was actually posed by one of our audience members <laughs> uh stacy wilson asked uh who, who was one of your favorite actors you've acted alongside so um, i guess kind of paul fills in that spot right there yeah paul paul fills in that spot by the way stacy cool way to spell spell stacy yes under the eye yeah, True. right on. They didn't do that uh, in the song, so that's pretty hipster. No, they didn't. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Stacy with an eye's mom. Um, I, uh, yeah. Pack I would that say, line, quick. <laughs> I would say, uh, yeah, I would say Paul. And um, I, uh, I got to do, um, 
wow, that was pretty cool. I mean, I guess I got to do a pretty cool... Actually, no, I can't. Um, I got to do a really cool thing this summer that I can't really talk about uh, now. I'm actually okay. not allowed to talk about it. Special, I just realized special? It. Don't, no, I, I won't make you break contractual obligation. Don't worry. I, I um, but yeah, no, I mean, uh, Paul, yeah, Paul, Paul's been like the nicest guy ever to me. So um, my mom wanted to be unique. <laughs> <laughs> no, that that's, that's awesome, to. man. That's great, th- yeah. <laughs> so, Rodrigo, man. I hate to sort of ask this, but as someone who loves this show so much and the way it sort of impacted me seeing this show get canceled, and I'm sure you kind of knew this was coming, unfortunately, given the day we're interviewing you, the day after the debut, us sort of looking at this from the outside as Americans, this show means so much to me and I've put so many of my friends onto it. Dom, I even got got to start, start watching it. But I mean, how have you been like holding up, handling that, that whole situation, you know? Um, at first it came as a shock. Uh, I mean, I think everybody, I, everybody got the phone call or something like I got a phone call saying that, uh, they weren't going to do it anymore. And, uh, I mean, it was a shock, but at the same time, like, it's kind of sweet that it's like five killer seasons and you don't really get that with, with a lot of shows. So for me, I'd rather they package it that way and have it five great seasons you can watch every episode and really feel like everyone had enough love in it instead of who knows. I, I don't know if they did an extra season. You never know. There could have been like if someone important was missing out of the production team, would it would it have been the same? You know, um, so I uh, I'm going to embrace it and say that this is the best thing that could happen and uh, people will keep watching the show the people they'll watch the the episodes and love them and hell i'm getting messages from people that are just starting to watch the show and just discovering it and it's from all over the place i'm getting you know i have i get uh, random relatives in that i never knew before who will message me and be like hey i know i'm seeing you on tv now and i'm like don't you you know they live in like argentina i don't know but it's uh it's really cool to see the impact this show had and uh i know that um hopefully a bunch of people get enrique tattoos on their chests <laughs> i think that, you know man that, would, that that would be a sight to see that would that would be awesome <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, I guess the follow up to that really is how has the reception of the finale been? You know, I mean, we don't we don't know that yet here in the States. Right. We're still yeah, waiting for it to it drop for, on Netflix patiently. Yeah. Uh, the last episode, I have not seen it yet. Oh, OK. So you're in the same boat as us. Yeah, I haven't watched it yet. I'm kind of are, are you saving it for a special moment or just haven't gotten a chance to watch it yet? Yeah, I'm a binger. So I like if I watch something, I watch like a season in a day. Got so I, uh, I, I usually don't watch if I watch, if I watch a show, I'm only watching that show at the time. Got it. Um, and right now, I'm really into uh, like romance thrillers from the '90s. Ooh, okay. Oh, so okay. I'm, we have to I'm get really, into more of that. In a little bit. <laughs> my my girlfriend and I are really into those at the moment. So. It's a um, good thing nice. It definitely, definitely, probably keeps you occupied. It sounds, the it sounds steamier than what it actually is. We're just <laughs> we, we enjoy the genre. That was it. So. No, that's cool. Uh, so AJ of AJ Reacts Two, good dude by the way, Rodrigo. Just so you know, he wants to know what is an actor slash actress you would love to work with. Um. Oh wow, that would be really cool to work with. Uh, um. Willem Dafoe, that would be pretty cool. <laughs> nice, that's a great choice. Yeah, probably have to get cast in a Robert Eggers or a Guillermo del Toro movie next. Yeah, you know what? It would be really cool to act near someone like that. I don't know. He just seems like the coolest guy. It would be very, very nice to meet him. So yeah, Willem Dafoe, and I just watched American Psycho. So, oh, great. Movie. Um, he was great in that, yeah. and uh, There's yeah, so I many mean, people in that movie. So a- AJ. Uh, it, does that answer your question? Yeah. <laughs> I think it does. I, you know, I'm wondering how, because I feel like there's sort of a tendency for 
people early on in their career, especially when they get attached to a show as big as Kim's, right? And especially in a situation like yours where you're playing bits and you're providing a lot of the comedic relief. And as we know, Kim's Convenience is a very dynamic show in the sense that there's a lot of drama interwoven into what is marketed as a sitcom. But someone like you who has so much bright future ahead of him coming off this show and all that. Thank do you, you consider yourself, of course, man, you were phenomenal. Do you consider yourself a comedic actor or is there a fear of maybe getting pigeonholed as one? Like how do you like define yourself as an actor? Uh, good question. I don't actually, I mean, I, I do call myself a comedian just cause that's, I don't know. That's how I started out. And uh, I started out doing a bunch of sketch videos, and uh, I never really, um, I never really decided to do dramatic acting in any way. Although I do do it, I I do random stuff, random shows where you know I'll do a dramatic role, and uh, I feel like comedians can tap into that pretty well. Um, but usually it's like a theater actor that'll do that, but. Um, I don't, uh, I, I would say I define myself as like a comedic actor just first and foremost, cause it's really, really fun. But if anything, it's kind of swayed its way into just, you know, being actor, the title. So I, uh, I, I, I think I define myself as an actor That's and probably... like, I, I don't, I actually don't like, I I'm a true believer in just do every, any role, not any role, but audition for everything and see what you're good at because you never actually know what people will kind of slot you in for. I mean, I you can pick and choose, I guess, at some point, but I uh, the, the way I got here was because I just kind of put myself out there. I auditioned for everything. Um, I just kind of made random short films with friends and uh yeah I, I i'm a true believer in just just put yourself out there and see where people uh like you right yeah definitely i feel like helps as far as kind of not letting you get a pigeonhole if you just like kind of classify yourself as a multi-versed actor but it's also i mean just the this is, is the case of all of just being an actor in general it's just you got to take the roles that you're given right so I mean, can you talk at all about, like, have you been, like, circulating any potential jobs post-Kims or right now just kind of dealing with the lockdown? I mean, when we were shooting – when I did Kims, it was, like, in October. So right. ever since then, yeah, there's been, there's been a, a few things that I've shot. But, uh, I mean, you just kind of, like, go – from in my position, you just go from job to job and uh, – it comes out whenever you actually you never know when it comes out it, it stuff could come out a year later stuff could come out two months later but um uh here it's been pretty good and and yeah I've, I, there's a few shows that'll be coming out in the next year that i'm a part of um some of them more dramatic than anything so nice. for your previous question but uh that's only because um i guess I swayed more to those, you know, that's what they saw me as. Uh, Cause I also feel like if I start calling myself something and I start like pushing myself to, towards that type of role or act or acting style, whatever um, it's, it'll just seem less genuine. Like it'll seem fake. Uh, like I don't want to, you know, I don't want to force myself to, to, uh, to be anything. Um, I'd rather just, I'll uh I'll be in whatever someone wants me to be in, right? Yeah, and I feel like again, like Simu is in Marvel and Paul's in Star Wars, so you never know as far as I'm concerned. Sky's the limit. I I have said that my one of my dream roles would be to play Puck in oh. in Marvel. Oh, dude, don't tempt me. That that, that gets my cool. Alpha Flight fan fiction going like nuts right now. That I'm would serious. Be pretty don't cool. tempt me with that. You I know, would be I would be a great puck. You That's honestly, you, you have to look for it and everything. It could, I, it could work. Honestly, oh my Let's god. Let's get it. Let's get it going. I'll start the hashtag right dude, after this, man. <laughs> hashtag Alpha Flight. So, Marvel, get on it. it. 
No, I'm glad you brought that up because I was going to ask him, Dom, because I'm so curious about sort of this situation you're in, you know? It's kind of like being um, a musician for so long, right? I've had, you know, friends on labels who their big label was their, their big album was their last album with that label and now they're free agents. And so they're riding this high, this huge success, but kind of the, the, the foundation that they had built that all off of yeah. is no longer there. But in the same sense where it's scary, it, it almost, and from what they've told me, has been very freeing. So, I mean, I'm kind of curious, like, where is your head at looking towards the future? You know, is is, is LA making that move now sort of something you might want to do? Are you going to be, we spoke to Sujith and Sujith was like, you know, hey man, I chose to stay in Canada and I'm very glad I did, but he certainly had that cross his mind. And I'm sort of wondering, like, now that you're sort of not free of it because I'm sure you love that show 10 times more than, you know, yeah. Dom or I ever could. But now that you're sort of in a new chapter, like wh where's your head at with that as far as your career goes? I mean, like I said, like I'm open to everything. So yeah, I, I the, the plan is to head down there. Um, but I don't know if I, 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 I honestly love living in Toronto, so I don't mind being here for now, but with the, uh, the visa and everything. Yeah. I, w I will get that and I'll head down there perhaps not at the moment due to a lot of the tension um, but uh, it will happen at some point maybe when I'm you know finally ready to make the the, the big step but at the moment right now uh, I'm pretty busy here and I enjoy it a lot and it's it's kind of the dream to be busy you know, yeah. it's kind of the dream to be like, I'm actually doing this. Especially so, where you live and you're comfy, too. Like, that makes a big difference as far as that goes. Yeah, and you get to make stuff with your friends sometimes. And, like, I, you know, it's at the moment I'm I'm fine and who knows, you know. This is, uh, uh, it, it's, the, the, the thing I keep reminding myself of is uh, 10 years ago. What did you say? Like, where, where did you want to be? And I'm kind of doing that now, you know, I'm, I'm a working actor. I'm doing my thing. So I, 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 I don't know. It can, it can only, uh, you know, it can, it can, it can only get better with like better roles and everything, but I, I'm very comfortable and I get to do this. Uh, and I'm not, you know, I, I'm not working that like side hustle job to get to that audition. I'm able to, you know, get that, get the audition notice and work on it throughout the day without having anything freaking me out to, you know, pay rent or anything. And to be able to say that during a time like this in, in during the pandemic. Yeah. Like that's, I mean, I mean, I'm a very lucky person. So it's been pretty good to be able to work here in Toronto and I hope yeah. it happens for a little while longer. Who knows? I've thought about maybe, who knows? Moving to Vancouver has been like a, an idea. But it, every time you start thinking about this stuff, something happens in your life that totally just changes everything. And uh, it doesn't it doesn't like ruin plans. But all it does is just makes you go like, well, that's right. You know, I don't I don't have full control of anything sometimes. So no. I hear that, man. Thank you for being so candid and congrats on, you know, earning that sort of position. That's that's really good to hear. You, but something in there was interesting and I kind of want to dial back because you brought up like 10 years ago. Was there sort of like an inner monologue with yourself or maybe you had a period where you, you weren't quite sure that this would work out, that you'd be busy one day and be supporting yourself as an actor? Like, did you ever sort of have, I guess, uh, we'll go to Joseph Campbell, right? Did you ever have sort of um, a dark night of the soul along your hero's journey? I had a hundred of them. Okay. <laughs> no, yeah, I, uh, no, yeah, like I said, you don't know what's going to happen. Like, I had no idea that, um, for a while I wanted to work in, here's a funny story, is at one point, um, I had, I was living, I was living, uh, with a couple of friends over in the West End, and uh, I had nothing going on. Um, I wanted to do comedy. I just had no idea how to do it. I was in my early 20s. And uh, I wasn't a very good stand-up comedian. I was like a horrible stand-up comedian. So I was kind of like, I don't know. I, I can't really do that. 
and uh, yeah, I didn't really know what to do. Um, I had no money, and uh, I ended up uh, finding an ad for telemarketing. And um, uh, I think I had just like uh, just gotten out of a relationship too, so it was like broken up, a broken guy in his early twenties, no idea what he's gonna do with his life, and. Uh, I also think the agent that I had at the time that um, dropped me because I wasn't doing anything because I had no, you know, I, I wasn't really doing anything. So what happened was I answered this ad for a telemarketing service and I ended up uh, calling in and uh, they said, uh, for some reason they said, you have the job. Uh, and all it was was just like a telephone, <laughs> telephone interview. And I took the bus at 6.30 in the morning to go to this place that was on the other end of the city. And I got there, I think I got there for like 7.45 in the morning. And I showed up and it was like on the seventh floor, uh, total office, you know, seventh floor office, cafeteria, everything. And I showed up, there's about 12 other people there. And then I get into this cafeteria and they sit us down. And it, as soon as it turned to eight o'clock, the boss comes out and they tell everybody to sit down and the boss does this whole like Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross speech about sell, like, you know, you know, about uh, what we're selling and everything. And, uh, about 10 minutes in to his speech, he says, uh, if you don't think you have what it takes to be here and be a salesperson, then leave right now, just get up and go. I don't know what it was that told me to get up and go, but I got up and I was the only person that got up and I said, this isn't for me. I got to go. And it was very awkward because it was like you heard the <laughs> chair, you heard the chair squeak on screech on the floor. And like I got up and I was like, OK, well, this isn't for me. And then I got up and I started leaving. Had no idea what I was doing. Cause I, I didn't really have any money and uh, I went um, back onto the bus started heading home and the whole time I was like oh man I just like gave up that job I guess it was a paycheck and uh, started heading home realized I had no food at home so I stopped off at like a, a corner store like market <clears throat> and uh, I don't know as every young like 22 year old does when they have no money and they make up their own meals i think i got like two dollar pasta and a can of tuna and i thought like this will last me a few days <laughs> and um i ended up going uh back home um and i didn't really know what i was gonna do i put my food away and then i like lied down thinking like okay what the hell am i gonna do and at that moment it was about 9.30 in the morning, 10 o'clock in the morning. I got a phone call on my like shitty uh, pay-by-the-minute cell phone. And I got a phone call from a production office who had gotten my name uh, from my brother who used to work in production. And they said, hey, uh, we're looking for an extra PA to drive around and hand out some contracts. We're in desperate need. Are you available? Your brother said that you have a license. And I was like, yeah, totally. I can come in. When can I come in? And they said, can you come in right now? We need somebody right now. And I showed up to their production office. And uh, that's how I got started in film. Like I literally showed up and just started doing that job. I was there for about three days. And then they said, we're going to need you for like two months. And then I said, oh, OK, and then gradually just started learning more and more about film, moved on to the next job as a PA, did that for like two months, moved on to the next job, gradually started learning more and more until I, you know, as soon as I got to like, I think I did it for about five years and then I started just filming my own stuff. And then it just turned into this thing where I was like, oh, maybe I want to act, too. And you just kind of like it just flowed. It was this weird thing. But that's how it's it all started it's so so weird how you have no idea uh how like you got to a place and you're kind of just like holy shit 
Like, I didn't realize that if I hadn't, you know, gone home on that bus, I would have missed that phone call for that PA job if I hadn't, like, gotten up at that telemarketing age, you know? So uh, I, uh, I, I, I like that story because I'm always like, first of all, I like that story because the pasta and tuna thing is hilarious. <laughs> um, but I, uh, I like that story, too, because I'm always like, if I hadn't, you know, if I hadn't just said, no, I don't want to do this, this isn't what I want to do. Um, I, I meant to, like, film stuff. Or not even film stuff. I'm just like, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm 22 years old. Like, you know, like I'm not meant to be here yet. Like I, I, I know that I'm supposed to be a performer or work in film or something. So yeah, I ended up doing that and it was great. And that's how it all kind of started. It was great. Wow. That's an awesome story, man. To quote the disaster artist, what a story, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> that's incredible yeah so i guess aj's question here kind of sort of segues nicely off that considering you kind of just told us about some of your background in the industry that we had no idea about you know only knowing you on screen so yeah ha have you thought about venturing into writing uh, directing or, or i guess for that matter going back to sort of some of the roles you i guess occupied earlier on in your careers are you now just fully in love with like being on screen um i like acting a lot just because of the fact that um, I seem to be in tune with it. It's really fun. Um, I like I like playing around in the scenes. I like doing that. So I'm having fun with it. I don't think I'll get into anything else for a while. I like I like creating other things. I've directed you know shorts and music videos. Um, I've also produced a bunch of stuff, and I like doing that just because I like being part of a team. And um, but I don't see myself. Only if it's only if it's like truly something I want to do because uh, stress levels. I, I don't really like stressing myself out when it comes to making anything. It's, no. it's so important yeah. to be. You you really do realize how stress affects you in yeah. every single way. Yeah. Through if when I don't know as as I got older I did realize that, um, but. I would say uh, if, you know, if, if I'm going to do that sort of stuff, like writing or directing, um, it, it, it's going to have to be something that's like either my baby or, you know, something that I really, really want to do. But at the moment, I'm having a blast acting and uh, I think I'll do it until people stop hiring me or tell me to stop, you know. <laughs> Which as, Yeah, as someone who is both, been in front of the camera and been behind the camera in different aspects i've overseen multiple shoots and even from like student film stress le levels it's stressful directing like just making sure all the different pieces come together in order to make that vision come through and that's why i'm i'm dabbling at writing right now i won't say like i'm a full-on one yet because i don't have anything fully published yet but you definitely do feel those strains but it's funny because when we were talking to sue Giff a couple weeks ago he mentioned the idea that it doesn't matter really what position you are. As long as you're helping to contribute to the vision in some way, you're a storyteller, you know? And I just totally. wanted to know if, like, yeah, I, I, I wanted to get kind of your take on that philosophy, you know, what you thought about that. I think that's a great philosophy. I mean, I, I believe every single person on a film shoot, if you're part of the team, you're so important. Um, and I've said it before on different jobs, uh only because also I think I've done a good amount of the jobs that are required on film sets where I've been a PA, I've worked in art department, you know, I've, I've been an assistant editor. I've, you know, I've directed stuff. I've been third AD, you know, so I, I know a good amount of how every single person, uh, I've done transport, which, you know, those guys, holy smokes, those guys don't sleep. Those guys are the ones driving us and they like they, they work so hard. Um, but yeah, everybody is part of a team. And I feel like if you can realize that you will realize your self-worth and do the best job possible and people will recognize that and they'll keep hiring you and you'll develop a reputation for being a great person to work with. And uh, I, I think uh, I think that's a valuable thing to learn. Because not many, I, I see it all the time where some people believe that, you know, oh, I'm stuck in this 
department and you're kind of like, what are you talking about? Like, if it weren't for you, you know, if it weren't for craft, like none of us would have energy or, you know, be fed. If it weren't for transport, we wouldn't be able to get here. So uh, it's uh, it, it happens a lot with PAs, I find. Yeah. I, the, you get that odd PA who's like, I'm ready to go, I'm ready to do this. And those are the those are the people that I remember, and those are the ones that I say, "What's your phone number? What's your email? I'm going to be calling you, and you're going to be working with me all the time." And it happens. It happens with production companies all the time that I'm working with, and I say, it, they'll say like, "Do you know a PA or do you know know an extra assistant that we can get?" And I send them their, you know, phone number, and I say, "Call this person." Um, and that's how it that's how it works. That's and that's honestly insane. Like to think about it, it just it's given me so many flashbacks. Like when I was on sex, I I was a background extra in different gigs. I was trying to at my hand as a PA, and then things just ended up falling through. And oh man, it is. I will say that being on a film set is probably one of the most stressful environments ever. But if it works, then it's also an experience unlike any other. And I feel oh, like yeah. I feel like both of those are both very very accurate descriptions as far as that goes. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess to be uh, conscious of your time, I only have like a few more questions for you. And so I kind of want to throw it back to uh, Kim's convenience. You know, I'm always curious, like everyone like I'm, I've been I'll give you a little quick backstory. You know, I, I first saw guitar when I was 12 and since then school, homework, grades, all that. Everything was secondary. You know, it, it was like entertainment. And I found podcasting as a way to like further use my voice as a singer and and further dive into my passions but like it's all that i've wanted was to have like a moment that you've seen with kim's and to have that for five seasons i mean what was what's that like you know i mean were, was it just like andy from the office said you know you you wish you knew the good times when you were in it or or do you feel that like you know walk, walk us through sort of like your, your your feelings looking back i guess only a few weeks ago at this point but to tell you the truth i kind of knew it's like i said it was so Anytime I was headed there, everybody was so nice. And working with Paul, who I mostly worked with, um, was just like the sweetest person. Paul's so good to work with. And you know, I, I knew the whole the whole time. I knew if it, that it was special. I knew that the scene I was doing was very special. I was excited to see what Enrique was up to. Um, anytime I got the phone call saying, we're going to have you back. Uh, this is what we're thinking. They would send me the script. Um, and it was just a blast to, to realize that. And that's why I'm saying I embrace it for myself. That's why I'm saying embrace it. Because at the end of the day, I don't actually know why it's gone. I don't know any of that stuff. But for me, my perspective is uh, I'm, I'm going to really, really enjoy the time that I had there. And I did. It was really, really fun. Um, during the pandemic, it, it is, I mean, for every job so far during the pandemic, it's a little weird because a lot of the parts that I enjoy about making, especially making something like Kim's, was the social aspect of it, where it was like people huddling around the monitor watching that last take or, you know, uh, being able to do a take and hearing the laughter from the, uh, you know, uh, from Video Village and like just stuff like that, which wasn't really there at the end because and that wasn't Kim's convenience fault. That was just it was because of what was going on with the pandemic. But no, I, I knew that everything was special. I knew that everything was, you know, uh, that I that you don't get that a lot with uh, a lot of productions one experience that I had that wasn't with Kim's, uh, that I worked on a show called The Amazing Gale Pile, uh, that's on, um, it's a web series that I worked on that was on uh, CBC Gem, and I think it's on Amazon Prime now, actually. You can watch it on Amazon Prime, I think. Um, and it's a comedy series, very weird com comedy series done by Morgan Waters and Brooks Gray, like two of the funniest people ever. And uh, I worked on that show for about four seasons, three seasons, four seasons. And uh, that's one of the shows I started out as a PA and worked my way up to third AD 
and uh, I got a, a spot on the show. I, I was cast in the show for a little bit. But like that's what I'm talking about is you de- you develop these relationships with, with people who want to work with you, and like you make it a blast to film stuff with. And this was the type of show that that doesn't happen all the time, where you know they call you back and it becomes this family. But the first time I worked on that show, um, the, like the first week that I ever worked on that show, uh, fr- it was like a Friday and we were done for the week and we had finished shooting. It was like 15 hour days and uh, the producers had bought everyone beer uh, to kind of like celebrate the week. And everyone's, you know, everyone's drinking. We're still on the set. We're having a blast. And the guy doing data was looking at all the footage that we had shot. And we're all, you know, one of us comes over and one of us is like, what are you looking at? And they're like, oh, it was one of these hilarious takes from the week. And then one other person pops over and is like, what are you looking at? The other person pops over until every single person is huddled around these monitors looking at the footage and just everyone's having a blast, laughing away. And I realized later on that that doesn't happen all the time. Right. So for me, I was kind of like, those are really the moments that are the best when you realize that, oh, that's right. We're like a family right now. Yeah. We're making something. And uh, it re- it's, it's pretty awesome to realize that later on. But with Kim's, I knew. Because those moments were happening, and um, people, you know, every, everybody was involved. Every single person. You walked into that production office, and every person said hello. Everyone was like, you know, asking you how your how your summer was, and you're like, gosh, you guys are so nice. But uh, yeah, that show was awesome. And I will miss it a lot, but I will also love telling stories like that where I'm kind of like it was you know it was exactly what you think it would be oh, man. really really cool me shed a tear right now <laughs> for like, real like, dude that was so sentimental I'm like oh my god I'm like Jesus Christ you and you know you miss it right <laughs> no that's incredible to hear because like I am you know unapologetically a huge fan of this show and a lot of times you hear horror stories and I'm really glad to know that like the legacy of this show from from what I've heard, speaking to so many of the actors, very blessed to have done that lately. It doesn't seem to be the case, and that's uh, something special in and of itself. So yeah, definitely, it's true. I honestly haven't heard this guy talk about a show this much that like was kind of unique <laughs> to him since Lost in the Office. And I'm like, it's been oh, a long God. time, Rodrigo. It has been. It has been a while. That's great. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, man. So before we let you go, and and I'm sure Dom might have a final question as well, but my final question would be, and I'm sure you sort of touched upon it, but you know, some of our audience are aspiring creators and, and, and actors and filmmakers. And so what do you have to impart to them that you think would be kind of helpful and, and something that maybe is uniquely from Rodrigo's experience? Uh, to be a, be a good person, be a good, perf- uh, good person to work with. And that's really all I can say. I mean, you can work on your stuff all you want, but if you're not a good person to work with, people will, uh, people will just not want to work with you and uh I, that's really my uh thing and we're seeing it more and more now uh where where people are calling people out on their behavior you know on set so i i would say just keep uh i mean if you're good people will recognize that but if you're a good person to work with people will just have your name ready to go if there is a project, they'll be like, "This is yeah, we need this person," um, and I, I value I value that a lot. I I think that's kind of the the best advice anybody can give you, because that's actually advice I got from a bunch of people early up, and I was lucky enough to, in those jobs that I did, where I was a PA in the office and I'm photocopying sides at eleven thirty p.m. on a Friday night, uh, you know. Uh, by myself while like the production coordinator is there yelling at the on the phone because something didn't come in on time you know uh me going into those into those offices the people that meant the most to me were the people that were like 
just be a nice person like be courteous when you drop off these contracts to the agents like say hello like you know be gracious and i would say that's kind of the best advice you can give anybody i mean nobody likes a nobody likes a dickhead you know <laughs> so true, true. It is very true. Yeah, no, it's it's really all sound advice. And again, like I said, I just the reason why I've been so silent is because literally just your speechifying it was literally throwing me back to like my film set days. And I'm like, oh man, I missed this, and I'm getting really sentimental about it. And I want to try and go back, honestly. But my last question for you is is the last question that I pose to all of our guests after we're done interviewing them, which is, what is a movie or TV show that you've seen recently that you've really liked, and what is a movie that you're looking forward to that's coming out relatively soon? Uh, a TV show, Search Party. Do you yeah, guys watch it's on HBO Party? Max. I haven't got a chance to watch. How is that? It's excellent. It's a really cool show. Nice. That's the type of show I would want to be on. Those got the, it. the best. The such funny, funny actors. I think they're all like New York comic comics. Right. They're all really, really funny. Yeah, one of them was uh, is a Arrested Development alumni. So there's that too. Oh yeah, they're all yeah. they're all really, really funny, and a mo- a movie that I'm waiting for. Uh, I mean, like I'm waiting for a lot of movies, but yeah. I, I like everyone is. I feel like I mean, Venom in October would be really cool. Yeah. Venom two, if that actually uh, comes out. If that actually comes out, I don't like. You know what? If your movie's taken this long to come out, it means that I don't know. It I I, I don't know. I hope it. I hope it's good. Uh, Mortal Kombat. Yeah. I want to see that. I'm really excited for that. Two Can't weeks. wait for that. Two weeks two weeks i'm so excited oh, it's gonna be awesome i'm gonna I think put they it on my projector far... it's gonna be great yes i think <laughs> that very deliberately as far as the weekend of the oscars go yeah um what's it called you you went to dune at all you looking forward to that dune yeah denny Villeneuve is yes. uh is one of the coolest directors so i'm excited yeah, for that canadian director so yeah i mean i'm not I, I don't really know the the story that well so i can't say that i'm excited for that just because i don't know it very well but uh i'm excited for whatever he makes and i know it'll be cool but uh i haven't much i haven't been much into like the epic uh epic like serious like space odyssey type of movies right i haven't really yeah. been into those lately We've been a bit inundated as well, yeah. so. This, this, year's been, this year's gonna be kind of a low key filmmaker year because there's not as many, but like <clears throat> supposedly the new Inuri Two movie is coming this year. We got the new Edgar Wright movie, and we got the new Paul Thomas Anderson movie. So we we, we got a couple. We got a couple to look forward to for sure. And yeah. the Sopranos prequel movie, which I I, I don't know. When is that out again? Like so, so they pushed it again. Right now, it's at the end of September. Right now, so it'll have been Oof. a full year. Since it was originally supposed to come out, because it was originally supposed to be September of 2020, we're gonna get a we're gonna get a fall of just powerhouses. Glutton. Yeah, Love it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna and be I'm gonna insane. go to the movie theater every week, every weekend. I'm for looking the forward longest to it. <laughs> time. It's gonna end the year with Matrix Four, which, if that comes out and is great, could be like insane. Spider Man Three. Yep, Spider Man Three as well. The new Spider Man Three. We should say No Way Home. Oh yeah. It's going to be sick. Yeah. Rodrigo, good... last and uh, final little tidbit, because Stacy's yeah, been guys, hanging the I, whole I can, time. So If there's if there's um, any more questions, I'll answer all the questions. I don't know. This is fun. You guys are great. Oh, thank you. Cool. Appreciate that. So I guess who is your favorite comedian? Who is my favorite comedian? Um, like right now? I mean, I like a lot of comedians. I'm a comedy nerd. Like I like a lot of like, Toronto homegrown comics. We need more um, of those in the states. Uh, there's a, I mean, there's a comic. Uh, if you guys want to check out a, a good comic here in Toronto, Tom Henry, he's really really funny. He's got a special on. Uh, he's got a special out here in Canada. Um. His name's Tom Henry. Uh, there's also oh, there's a New York comic, Sam Morrill. Not familiar He's with really, him. Really, really yeah, funny. I haven't heard of him. He's really funny. I follow him on Instagram. Um, and uh, who else? There's a bunch of other people. But yeah, I'd say like yeah, those those comics I've been kind of like just watching recently. Um, but like movie comedians. Um, 
I'm gonna say like my oh, one of my all time favorites is Chris Farley. Nice. The legend. legend. Just to just to give off the some nostalgia for everyone. But yeah, Chris Farley is I, I don't know what it is. He's just my the greatest, funniest thing ever. Yeah, so certainly, funny. Certainly had a had a charm to him unlike oh, any other. A charm and a skill level unlike any other. Oh man, so yeah. funny. It's it's funny because I don't talk about movie parallel universes too much, but I still do want to see the parallel universe where he voices Shrek. He was supposed to be the voice. <laughs> he was going to voice Shrek. Shrek. Yeah, it was it was in the Chris Farley documentary that was released. He was going to be he was going to voice Shrek, and that's what caused him to delay. It was when he died, and they had to find out who to recast him as. And they cast Mike Myers. Yep. And we got stuck with the fat bastard voice of Shrek. Oh. <laughs> hey, Shrek was great though. I mean, Chris Shrek Farley would have been pretty cool in that role for sure. Yeah, um, that's true. Yeah, Shrek Two is funny. Oh, I don't know if you've watched that recently. Shrek Two, <laughs> no, is they're funny. They're funny. funny. Yeah, they are. I like them. They're funny. It's just, uh, I mean, I guess, I guess they're not making any more, right? No, is as of right now, no. They've been talking about Shrek Five. Forever, it's been eleven years since the last one, so I don't think they're making. Yeah, we're fine. I don't need them. I don't need any more Shreks. It's all good. They made four of those movies. Jesus, why? Are we ending this on? We hate Shrek. (laughs) (laughs) Oh man, we could. Um... Oh man, I feel like that's (laughs) only point, especially because Shrek's twentieth anniversary is in a month. So I guess this is good low key marketing for whatever we're gonna do for that. So that's funny. That is funny. That's awesome. Rodrigo, this was an absolute blast, dude. Yes, Thank you so much for man. giving us a good chunk of your evening, coming on, chatting. Um, I had a blast, blast, man. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. I'll do. I would do this again anytime. You guys oh, are really, man. really That's nice. That's good because uh, honestly, I'm like you. You just got an insane idea, Chris. Do I have permission for you to do the Alpha Flight talking TV fan cast featuring Rodrigo? And the key is, we only exclusively do it with Canadian actors that he knows about. <laughs> I mean, Sounds good did to I me. Pitch the greatest movie draft idea uh, ever, or what? That is pretty That's solid, man. Board, I'm but... totally into it. Let's oh man, it. please, <laughs> that would be. Are you can like it would have to be like right when Marvel's like about to announce who their X Men roster is gonna be, and like we introduce Alpha Flight, it's all Canadian actors, and then Kevin Foggy Loki casts them all, including you as Puck. It would be genius. Brilliant! I'd love to see that. <laughs> That's like long term, <laughs> long term planning right there. But I'm like, screw it, let's do it. Why yeah, not? I'm down. That that would seem really fun. Yeah. Cool. Well, Rodrigo, dude, um, what can the people expect from you that you can speak about? Where can they follow you? Keep up to date with everything you have going on. Let them know. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at Rod on the Internet. Um, and you can follow me on Twitter at Rod- Rodrigo F. Stoll. Um, and, uh, yeah, I have a few things coming out in the next little while. I, I, I wish I could tell you guys about them, but, um, I've signed NDAs. So I cannot actually uh, say anything. Damned NDAs. Well, hey, man, it just means we'll have some more to talk about with you in the future. Yes, Can't wait to really, see what you're going to be up to. I'm telling you right now, it'll be really, really cool. Um, and I can't wait. And, uh, yeah, you guys are you guys are great, man. Right on. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Of course, man. A pleasure, as always, people. The great... Rodrigo Fernandez Stola, a.k.a. Kim's Convenience. I really, Hopefully, we do end up taking AJ's t-shirt name as a slogan that you could potentially patent, which is try not to be a dickhead overall. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> let's hope. You know what I will say is I have no idea if this will happen, but let's hope that, who knows, maybe there's a Kim, Kim's Convenience movie one day, oh, you know? Don't, don't, don't. I was about to say, don't get my hopes up. Don't get my hopes up. As hey, don't, as get, don't get my hopes up. I don't know. You never know. These things. Dude, five seasons in a movie? The, I'd love wait, it. I'm still waiting for the Community movie. I'm still waiting for that. Yeah, that would so, be really cool. Community is so uh, good. Like, because you know the Russo brothers, they, they would they would direct the shit out of that movie. That would that would be insane. That would be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so with that being said, people, that was our latest celebrity interview with the great Rodrigo Fernandez Stoll. If you had have any other like requests, anything like that for like potentially some other celebrities that we could be having on relatively soon, let us know in the comment section below. Be sure to click the subscribe button on this video. Click the like button. Click the bell next to it. That way you guys get notified every time we put up new content. Guys, we've moved up a level or uh, we, we are doing content seven days a week now. 
for you guys. We've got some clips of some of the podcast episodes that we've been doing existing on there. We've still got some incredible interviews. We've got some more interesting ideas. Next week, we're doing the Oscars movie, the best and worst pictures movie draft. That's going to be a lot of fun to do. We've got two episodes left of Falcon and Winter Soldier. We're going to finish this month with a blast with Mortal Kombat overall. Chris, where can the good people follow you on the interwebs? Yeah, man, if the people uh, want to be so kind, they can go follow me anywhere that matters at Christian Ivanko, Ivanko spelled E-V-A-N-K-O. I'm working on my album, guys. It's really coming together. It's going to be a little while, but I'm going to be posting teasers, snippets, clips, you know, the whole nine over there. So go follow me. I also have another podcast called Talking with Andrew and Chris. Talking spelled the same way we, sh we uh, spell our little show here. We talk about music life. Everything in between. I would appreciate any support that you throw my way. And thank you guys for doing that. Dom, what about you, man? Where can the people find you? Absolutely. I think the only thing that I have posted right now on my personal pages as I pull them up and stall uh, Facebook and Instagram at Movie Nerd Reviews overall. And I think this was the latest sarcastic post that I put up on my page. Uh, I think it was when I directly posted the F9 trailer that dropped today. <laughs> Humble, humble brag right there and i think that my sarcastic comment on it was bruh i can't also magnets in all caps because i will say this trailer answered a lot as far as this trailer answered a lot as far as some of the questions that i have for that movie going in but that's where they can follow me at movie nerd reviews on facebook and instagram overall and uh people once again Leave us comments in order to let us know what some other future content could be. We've got so much planned for you and so much yet still to come overall. So with that being said, from myself, from Chris, from Rodrigo, 12 seasons in a short film, and watch more fucking movies and TV. We'll see you guys next time.